Good morning. My name is Evelyn Oliveda, and I am the associate pastor here at Circular Church. And I am delighted to see you all here in our sanctuary, and so glad that some of you are choosing to join us online. Whether you are joining online or on site, you are so welcome here. If you are a visitor, we extend a special welcome to you and hope that you will stick around after the service because we have snacks and drinks and a time to greet one another behind the green curtains after the worship service. Also, if you are a visitor, we invite you to scan the QR code on the back of your pews called the Connect Card. Um, and it's just a way of letting us know that you were here and you also can check off if you want to receive our newsletter or anything like that. It's kind of like our uh, online guest book, if you will. If you are a member or a friend with a profile, we invite you to attempt to check in. I know that it's not always uh, possible because of some glitches, <laughs> but if you can, if you can try that, that would be wonderful. Here at Circular Church, Every Sunday we say that whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And now let us take a moment to pass the peace to one another. See if you can spot someone new and say hello or someone not wearing green that you can pitch. <laughs> Good morning. And now for a few announcements. The Charleston Area Justice Ministry Rally is Monday, March 18th at 7, which is tomorrow at Mount Moriah Baptist Church in North Charleston. All Cajun Network members have committed to come to this meeting to prepare for the Nehemiah action. And those who are not members of the Charleston Area Justice Ministry are welcome to come and attend and check out what Cajun 
the acronym is all about. There will be easy parking, and network members will get their tickets from their team leaders. Non-members can get free tickets after church from Peggy Welty, who is waving back here, and who will be in Keller Hall behind the green curtains with a Cajun Charleston Area Justice Ministry sign. We are experiencing a staff shortage in the nursery, so we want to continue to offer loving care for our youngest friends, and they are so delightful. So while we are hiring new staff, we will need a lot of extra help in the nursery. So if you're able to sign up for one shift or more to bridge the gap until we are fully staffed, sign up through the All Church email that went out a couple of weeks ago, and I believe it's still in the current newsletter. Thank you for considering this and for giving back to our community. Coming up, we have youth activities. There's a book club meeting today, parent meetups, vacation Bible school, special services for Holy Week, church decoration day, and more. So for those and other announcements, please see your bulletin your app, your newsletter, and the projections before and after church on the walls. And now as we transition to a centering time, I'm very much preoccupied with a trip that's coming up for me, so much so that often I'm not present right here and right now. And Easter is coming, and spring break is coming for our schools. There are a lot of things just on the horizon. Perhaps you have a trip planned, or perhaps you have a doctor's appointment or something you're not looking forward to planned. But think with me for a moment of something that you are either looking forward to or perhaps dreading that is on the horizon and that takes up a lot of your mental space. In the scripture passage that will be read today, Jesus is dreading something, and he asks his disciples to stay awake with him. And so as we think about that thing that is coming, let us remember to stay awake to the present, and let's practice that with a breath prayer. So if you're not familiar with a breath prayer, it's a prayer that uh, aligns with your breath, with your breathing. So you will say a short word or phrase as you breathe in and a short word or phrase as you breathe out. And it's easier to do it if you just say it in your head. Um, but let's practice three times the breath prayer of breathing in, stay, breathing out, awake. So let's practice that a few times. And I will say stay awake, but you can just breathe in and breathe out. Stay awake. Stay awake. Stay awake. May you keep that breath prayer near you whenever you feel like you need to ground down to the present moment. And let us join our hearts together in worship.
Please stand and join me for the responsive call to worship. In this season of Lent, we make way to the cross. In this season of Lent, as we make our way to the cross, we strive to follow the example of Jesus, to admit the betrayal and fear that are part of life. So that we may make our journey, let us strengthen our hearts together in this hour. Please stand in spirit or body as we sing our first hymn. reading from Matthew from the inclusive Bible then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples stay here while I go over there and pray Jesus took along Peter James and John and started to feel grief and anguish then he said to them my soul is deeply grieved to the point of death please stay here and stay awake with me Jesus went on a little, a little further and fell prostrate in prayer. Abba, if it is possible, let this cup pass me by, but not what I want, what you want. When Jesus returned to the disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, couldn't you stay awake with me for even an hour? Be on guard and pray that you may not undergo trial. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. With, withdrawing a second time, Jesus prayed, Abba, if this cup cannot pass me by without my drinking it, your will be done. Once more, Jesus returned and found the disciples. They could not keep their eyes open. Jesus left them again, withdrew somewhat, and prayed for, for a third time, saying the same words as before. Finally, Jesus returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping? Still taking your rest? The hour is upon us. The chosen one is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be in our way. Look, my betrayer is here. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a great crowd with swords and clubs. They had been sent by the chief priests and elders of people. Judas had arranged to give them a signal. Whomever I embrace is the one, he, said, he had said. Take hold of him. He immediately went over to Jesus and said, Shalom, Rabbi, and embraced him. Jesus said to Judas, Friend, just do what you're here to do. At that moment, the crowd surrounded them, laid hands on Jesus, and arrested him. 
May we hear the wisdom and the words. Thanks be to God. Is this, is this on? Okay. So, good morning. I want to gather all the children up here with me. And I'm sure there'll be a couple moms and dads too. Come on up and join me. Come here. Come sit down over here. Thank you for sitting so nicely. Thank you so much. It's so good to see all of you today. And my name is Candace Sugars, and some people call me Miss Candace. And I am so excited to be with you, because it's been a long time since I've been here with you during the children's time, but I was hopeful that I would be back again. And here I am. And so hopeful is the word that we're going to talk about today. Raise your hand quietly if you've heard the word hopeful. Yes, raise your hand quietly. That's true, the hopeful. So I want to talk to you about hopeful. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you about our teacher, the teacher that teaches us about hopeful. And this is, this is our teacher. Uh, this is our teacher who's Jesus. See, and this is kind of like one of my very favorite pictures in all the world because Jesus is talking to the children. And do you know what? Way back when, a long time ago, his disciples would say, don't bother Jesus. Jesus has a lot on his mind. And Jesus would say, no, I want the children to come to me. And they did, didn't they? And so they came to Jesus, and Jesus wanted them to know three things. So I'm going to put this down for a minute. Alden, I want you to find your place. Alden, where do you want to sit? Okay, thank you. Is that where you want to sit? That's a good place to sit. So I want you to hold your heart, right? Put your hand over your heart. There you go. Where's your heart? There you go. There's your heart. And Jesus wanted us to have three things in our heart. Faith, love, and hope. Faith, love, and hope. And hope is being hopeful. Hope is being hopeful that things will get better and not giving up. And Jesus didn't want us to give up because he knew that sometimes life got really hard and a lot of times we had feelings of not quite good feelings all the time, right? So sometimes we have feelings that aren't always good feelings, but he wants us to know not to give up and to have hope. And Jesus even had those feelings. So when Jesus was feeling nervous or worried, he went up to the mountain and he prayed to God. And his God he called Abba. And he said, Dear Abba, I'm worried. And he spent time with God to get, help him when he felt worried or nervous. And so Jesus called the little children because one, he loved them. And number two, he wanted them to learn the same thing that he was going to teach the adults. Because he felt like they can learn tune. It was important for them to learn lessons. And also because he felt like you had a special light within you, all of you. And so what we're going to do is take a minute. Do you ever, raise your hand if you've ever had feelings of being, raise your hand if you've ever had feelings of being nervous. Yes, that is, oh, and the adults too. Raise your hand if you've ever, wow, that's, a, we've got to really have a lesson around this. Uh, yes, we all feel nervous, you know, and we feel afraid and we feel like things like that. But we kind of know, Jesus wanted us to know not to give up and there are things that we can do. So what can you do if you're feeling nervous? What can you do if you're feeling nervous? What can you do? That's what Jesus said, your thought and your actions. He said, take a break and think about it. That's, a, <laughs> that's amazing. What else can you do if you're feeling anxious, nervous, or worried, or anything like that? 
Can you think of something you can do? You're thinking. What can you do? Do what? Say it again. Do you know what? That is so good. He talked about being brave. That is really true. So there's always something we can do because that feeling can pass by what we're going to do. Okay? So before we end, we're going to actually sing a little song. <clears throat> My voice is a little out of tune, so I'm going to have all of you sing it with me. Do you know what I'm going to do? Because Jesus said, number one, you had a light within you. So when I count to three, we're going to put your light up. And you can all do that too. Ready? One, two, three. Ready? And your light on. Flick it on. And you know what we're going to sing? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And Alden, you had, I think it's Alden. Is it Alden? You have a very nice singing voice. So thank you for joining in with us. Um, let's pray, okay? Put your hands together. We learned today that one of the best things we can do is put our hands in front of us. Because when we're all doing this, it means that we are all connected and we are all loving each other. Our Father is Jesus, our teacher is Jesus, and we want to know that we're going to do the best we can down here on earth to have faith, hope, and love, and to do the actions that are going to help us to feel that way. Amen. Now, I'm going to be the one that's going to um, walk you over. Okay? I'm going to walk you over. Oh, thank you for being with me today. Thank all of you.
In keeping with this morning's theme, I would like to read a short poem that Annie Johnson Flint wrote nearly 100 years ago. In just a few words, she describes our relationship with God. Her words were true then, and they are still true today. After I've finished, please join me in a few moments of silent contemplation. God has not promised skies always blue, flowers strewn pathways all our lives through. God has not promised sun without rain, joy without sorrow, peace without pain. But God has promised strength for the day, rest for the labor, light for the way, rest for the trials, help from above, unfailing sympathy, undying love. Please join me in prayer. To the creative spirit of love that we call God, we pray. God, please forgive us for allowing ourselves to be seduced by the siren call of the deadly sins of greed, wrath, envy, lust, gluttony, and sloth, and putting those false gods before you. Guide us, O oh God, to recognize these weaknesses in ourselves, to name them, and therefore help rid us of them. Help us to understand and deeply believe that putting our neighbor's needs above our own is our only path, our only path to attaining true and everlasting peace and joy. And please, God, help us to realize that troubled times, such as times of illness or despair, are necessarily parts of all of our lives, but are not necessarily bad, that all sunshine and no rain only makes a desert. We pray this within your nature and for your sake. Amen. Please stand in body or spirit as together we sing our hymn. Forty-four, sixteen, fifty-six. No, the next line isn't hut hut. 
and it isn't my high school locker combination, which I seem to be able to remember even though I'm still writing 2023 when I sign or date something. It's actually how many hours I was in labor with each of my three children. <laughs> I agree. My darling daughter decided to introduce me to the unpredictability of motherhood by arriving 10 days late and with 44 hours of labor. Now, I don't have a favorite child, but my middle son came with only 16 hours of labor. And my youngest, he took a whopping 56 hours of labor. With each of my children, there was a moment when I couldn't do it anymore. I don't mean a movie like, I can't do this anymore, and everyone in the birthing suite cheers, yes, you can, and I rally for one final push before welcoming my baby into the world. No, it did not go that way for me. I actually couldn't do it anymore. I had nothing left to give. With my daughter, I required medical intervention to stop uncontrolled bleeding and was a breath away from a blood transfusion. My youngest son was in distress, so not only was the labor long and painful, but I couldn't move. I had to stay in one position the whole time on my left side or his heart rate would drop. Even after making it through labor, there were other challenges. At three weeks old, my daughter developed an infection and was hospitalized. It was a scary and exhausting time when I was already scared and exhausted. When my youngest was six weeks old, my middle son, age two, developed a complication with his eye that suggested a brain tumor. We went through emergency testing to try to manage it as soon as possible. I left my three-year-old and six-week-old in the care of friends while I held my two-year-old until he fell asleep with anesthesia and could go back for this MRI. There have been a number of times in my life that have been one impossible ask after another. Simply lifting my head off of the pillow and getting out of bed took every ounce of strength I had. I couldn't take another step. But I wasn't given a choice. My infant daughter would get sick. My body was going to force this birth to happen. My two-year-old son would need immediate care despite me having a newborn. Life keeps coming. As hard as it is to accept, life really can be like that. Impossible. You can't go another step. You can't. But life keeps going regardless. In order to cope with these harsh realities, we often imagine life to be like a Rocky movie. In the movies, just when we think our hero is finished for good, he rallies one more time with renewed vigor, lands those punches, and comes out battered and bruised but victorious. Of course that's how we want our story to go. It's what helps us get through, the hope that we will ultimately be the victor of our circumstance. But what do we do when the outcome we are working so hard to achieve doesn't appear. In our scripture passage today, we see Jesus in that position. He had dedicated his life and career to helping others, to moving people from hurt to hope, to inverting power structures that were unjust and harmful, to love, and it seemed like it was working there for a while until it wasn't, until he was betrayed by one of his best friends, 
until the very power structure he was trying to shift came for him. He gave everything he had, and it didn't work. We find Jesus facing this reality. He can read the writing on the wall. What happens next is obvious. So he asks his friends to sit with him while he processes what has happened and what seems inevitable. He desperately searches for any possible alternative. But he has chosen the way of love. And in a society that prioritizes power over peace and personal gain over the dignity of others, the way of love has consequences. Jesus is heartbroken, exhausted, needing a break, needing the comfort of his friends, needing to see another ending to this story. And he gets none of it. His friends keep falling asleep. No alternative presents itself, and he gets no break at all. Rather, he is immediately forced into the next part of his journey, coming face to face with betrayal, unjust arrest, torture, and death. When Jesus died, it must have seemed to him that the story was over. And yet, here we all are today. And therein lies the hope and the lesson for the rest of us. We cannot base our choices nor our measure of success on whether or not we see the outcome we want. We have to let that go. Because if the only reason that we do what is right or good is so that we can see a certain result, what do we do when that result doesn't happen? What do we do when we love and still get hurt? When we fight the good fight and still lose? If our only motivation is to see a certain outcome, we can so easily become overwhelmed, hopeless, bitter, and mean. We give up because what's the point? Jesus gives us the answer to that question, as do others. The good work matters immensely. We see this story time and time again throughout history. Folks who never got to see what they were working so hard to achieve. Dr. Martin Luther King said, of all the forms of inequality, injustice in health is the most shocking and inhuman. He said these words in 1966. He was assassinated in 1968. It wasn't until over 40 years later that the Affordable Care Act was passed. And while our health care system is far from just, we can see a direct line from Dr. King to the progress that has been made. And King's demand for justice in health care continues to push us forward today as we advocate for reproductive rights, trans health care, and other challenges. Anne Frank wrote every one of the words that inspire us while hiding from Nazi persecution in a tiny room. She was found, taken to a concentration camp, and died before her diary ever saw the light of day. Her work has since been translated into 70 languages, sold over 30 million copies, has been the basis for award-winning plays and movies, and has inspired generations. She didn't even see her 16th birthday, much less the impact she would ultimately have. As I was writing this sermon, thinking about these people who continue to guide us in the ways of love and justice, something occurred to me. Not only did the people I mention have an impact that they never got to see, their impact was dependent on them not having seen it. No crucifixion, 
no assassination, no concentration camp, and then the impact is not remotely what it would ultimately be. What if sometimes our good work is to offer the sacrifice of not standing on the podium with the trophy, not reaching the peak, not being a part of the end game. We are asked to fight the good fight, take the next steps, move the needle in the right direction. The willingness to point the way to the promised land while not stepping into it ourselves may be how we all ultimately get there staying fully present to the work, not turning away from the pain, that of ourselves or others, knowing in our hearts that the battle might not be won in a time and a place that we can see it, that perhaps is the most beautiful work of all. That is true love. The work of Lent is valid because we know Easter is coming whether we are there to see it or not. Love wins. It does. I know this truth deep in my bones. But my work and your work might be to make sure that love wins even when we lose. To lie beaten and broken with only more difficulty to come and to choose love anyway because it matters. I promise it matters. Your willingness to love in the midst of your pain, your willingness to keep your back strong and your heart soft against all odds, it matters. We have to stop looking to results to find our hope and instead look within our own hearts. Look into the eyes of one another See and know, it matters. You matter. Let's keep going. Amen. And now as we collect the offering, we do so with the reminder that all of the money that we collect is used to support our church, which is a house of welcome for all. And it's also used to support our work for justice and peace and love in the world outside these walls. We also acknowledge that people give in many ways, physically now, via the app, with their time and talent. As we pass the plates, it is an opportunity to see your neighbor deeply and offer gratitude for the ways that they enable our community to love well. And it is in that spirit that we pass the plates.
It is our practice here at Circular to share joys and concerns as a community and hold space for them together. You are invited to voice what's on your heart. If you raise your hand, we will bring you the microphone. Um, please know that this is live streamed in this moment, but when we post the service later to YouTube, we do edit out this part. Will you pray with me, please? God, who we call love, Brene Brown said, compassion is knowing our darkness well enough that we can sit in the dark with others, and that it is never a relationship between the wounded and the healed, it is a relationship between equals. As we hold each other in prayer in these next moments and allow ourselves to be held, remind us that we do so as equals that it is in awareness of our own pain that we can be present to the pain of others. Help us to find the courage to allow light to shine in the corners of our hearts that scare us, showing us clearly and without question that even there we are loved. Help us to recognize the people who will love us if we allow them to know us, and help us to provide safe spaces for those who need to be authentically loved. May we see and be seen, listen and be heard, know and be known, love and be loved. As we pray this, we hold in our prayers the things have been shared aloud in this space and the many other things we carry quietly. We pray love for those who are grieving, for those who are lonely, for those struggling with addiction and those in recovery, for all who are struggling with their mental or physical health and their caregivers, for all of the world's peacemakers and those who care for the earth. We pray these things in the spirit of Jesus as we say together the prayer he taught us. Our mother, our Father, You're invited to stand in body or spirit for the singing of our last hymn, which can be found in your order of worship. And Frank wrote, it's a wonder I haven't abandoned all my ideals. They seem so absurd and impractical. Yet I cling to them because I still believe, in spite of everything, that people are truly good at heart. I see the world being slowly transformed into a wilderness. I hear the approaching thunder that one day will destroy us too. I feel the suffering of millions. And yet, when I look up at the sky, I somehow feel that everything will change for the better, that this cruelty too shall end, that peace and tranquility will return once more. As we go from this place, 
May we, like Anne, like Martin, like Jesus, have the courage to face the hard truths of the present, intentionally create the future that we hope for, and let that be enough to keep us moving forward. Amen.